how my cat created a masterpiece. Yes, you heard it right. Come on a journey with me. To my desk, to my PowerPoint presentation. Yes, I did. This is me. I'm a man with a plan. And I'm gonna explain this plan to you. Once upon a morning, I was drinking some coffee and reading the newspaper, and I noticed this cartoon standing in the corner. It made me think, thinking very hard. The next morning, I woke up and expressed the words. I want to make a sofa that turns into art when a cat scratches it. <laughs> I gave it a name, Pete Cat Sofa. The name of the sofa is derived from three words. 1. Picasso, coming from the famous Citroën car, that's a joke, a cat, obviously, and a sofa, obviously. Meow! Wrong slide, but how did I do it? It all started with the beginning, no, not that early. To beginning, when I went to several fabric companies to explain the concepts. I went to all sorts of fabric companies, but none of them had the magical fabric I was looking for. So I had to work with my brain. I came up with a few ideas. But eventually, I had to cut the knots. ka -ching! And I chose to work with Nelum. Nelum? Yes, from the panties. Yes. Why, I wonder, on the picture, you see a woman. A woman which is very sad. Because she has a hole in her panty. Not only does she have a stretchy hole, but with the hole comes a ladder. As we say in Dutch, I don't know if it's English, but it's a ladder. This ladder can increase size once it gets more stretched. And this is exactly what I want to base my idea upon. If I put several layers of nylon above each other in different colors, and they get stretched by a cat, it would create different size holes with different size ladders above each other in different colors. That was what I was hoping for. But I will tell more about this later in the video. So stay tuned. Besides a varying external layer, I had to choose a strong underlayer. For this, I chose an industrial felt, which I got for free, then decided to experiment with these materials in my studio. And started sewing them together. Now that I've decided all the materials to work with, I had to think of a design. Easier said than done, since I had other things on my mind. Hee <laughs> I made professional instructions. For the sofa I designed, the Picat sofa is not only a sofa, it's also a bath with a little scratching post for the cat. It is designed out of five different compartments which all go together, unlike more traditional designs where they use staples and it's a mess to recycle. So I made up a very simple design in which every compartment is basically a pillow with a hard ground structure with a special Picat sofa cover around. In this last instruction, you can see how they are connected by ropes, which are going through the sofa in pre-made holes. And then depending on your need, you can either attach them as a bed or as a sofa. And once you installed your bed, you're ready for a romantic evening. Let me know in the comments if you can guess what the angry woman is reading next to her drunk husband. So a design was ready. I was ready. It's time to create a dummy. For the people that don't know, a dummy is like a prototype of a prototype. And for the people who don't know, a prototype is like a it's like a unphotoshopped woman before it gets a whole treatment. So yeah, I took some scraps. And I made a eeny mini tiny version of it. Just so I could see if the design works, and if I'm happy with it. So, this is me, tiny me, sitting on a sofa, watching some television. And here is then the sofa bed, in stealth as a bed. Me and my girlfriend lay under, very happy. Time to make the actual prototype, slash and Photoshop woman. I've got a whole container full of panties, which I then cut into equal pieces. Afterwards, I colored all the pieces in three different colors. I chose for the color violet, green, and the natural panty color, which is brownish. It is a very messy process. I will never do it again. Then it was time to cut the mattresses, which were gonna be put inside. Someone told me 
I could cut it easily into shape with a bread knife. That's why these mattresses are standing in a bakery. As a joke, I cut some wood. I then cut the under layer of the fabric of the sofa in my cellar. I color the felt black. My mother, I mean myself, fixated the color. And then I finally had all the necessary parts. And it was time to sew them together. It was the first time I was sewing. I struggled a lot. The machine didn't want to cooperate with me. He didn't like me at all. Luckily, I had some friends who tamed the machine for me. I bumped into this beautiful quote. Not all heroes wear capes, but this one does. And I think it's very relatable for this moment. I then had all the separate parts sewed together. I trimmed the edges a little bit. And then I sewed them together to one big scratching cat sofa. I made some holes in my hands and in the fabric where the ropes can pass through. And I then got my batch for using ropes to create a sofa. And then we were finally there. Drop roll. Here is some more moving footage of the cat actually scratching the sofa and creating beautiful patterns. Are you ready to see the Pika sofa finally in action? Meow. Meow. Success. And here are some professional pictures. Wow. Wow. I want to express my final gratitude towards all the grandmothers who have helped me to tame these difficult sewing machines. In my next video, I will be exploring in how to make a toilet visit more fun. Following upon that, I will also create a video in which I explain how I created the world's first turnable spherical cabinet. Give my first video a like if you enjoyed it. Peace out!